What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm taking you guys behind the scenes of my most recent shoot with Riley. Every time I plan a shoot, I always have goals that I want to accomplish and get out of. This first shoot I wanted to accomplish this one, I needed some behind the scenes and some content for my Instagram and YouTube. And then my second goal was to practice more of my 12 millimeter F2. And then my last goal was just really to learn and see if I can learn anything out of this shoot and what can I apply out of it. Now, when I first started the shoot, I started with a 56 millimeter F1.2. Normally I begin either with a 56 or 35 millimeter F1.4. And then lastly, now that I'm experimenting is with the 12 millimeter F2. Anytime that I'm shooting, I usually first wanna start with any movement shots. And then I kind of work my way into more of the posing shots. I prefer just Hey, starting out with something that's simple. Riley is not a professional model. She's a school teacher, but I actually known her way back because she was in college and she worked with me. So that's how me and Riley know each other. Anytime that I do not work with somebody who's involved in this industry, like in photography or videography and who's not a professional model or actor, um, you always want to make sure that you start, you know, making them feel comfortable. Walking shots, action shots are just a great way to start. And then you can get into posing once you find out, you know, the attributes that you like the most about them so that you can highlight it through your photography or videography. Now these shots, um, man, I, I'm, I really love them. I, when I actually first planned to shoot, I talked to my wife and I was like, hey, I need to find somebody that, you know, kind of pops out and just stands out. She's like, well, why don't you shoot with Riley? I was like, great point. You know, if you have a wife, you should ask her or something, you know, she always has good tips. So I went ahead and did just that. I reached out to Riley and she was kind enough to spare some of her time to be involved in the shoot. Cause if you guys are from Florida, you guys know that it's hot and it's humid and we were getting bitten up. But overall, uh, she killed it. She nailed it. Her red hair, green eyes really helps her stand out from the environment. Now I've already shot in this location. If you watch the last behind the scenes video with Isabella, you actually see that it's the same um, scenery that I did shoot um, in both locations that I do. But I changed it up. Instead of her wearing white um, in this location, Riley is wearing black. Um, and that just helps her just stand out a little bit more and just go after more of a moody tone and feel overall. Um, what we did with these outfits is that we started with one outfit and we started with hat glasses and current outfit she's wearing as you guys can see and what helps is that if they have a lot of layers and props on is that as the shoot goes on you can start removing those layers or adding them back um, and then you can get a couple different looks and outfits out of it without you know if, especially in nature and there's no restrooms or places to change um, you're deep in the trail so uh, be able to have those layers just really helps and it makes it a lot easier to get different looks and different feel and different style So that's a big tip for you guys if you do shoots a lot and with different outfits Hey, try considering of adding more layers to the outfit and then you can get a different look every time and with women when anytime you're shooting a woman um, If they have long hair it really does help because you can get different look and different feel Because they can always put their hair one way or the other or move it around it really does help and adds that texture as i mentioned in the last video now to all my creatives out here i do shoot photo and video when i'm doing collabs sometimes i don't do the video side or sometimes i don't do the photo side i go for purpose like i mentioned I always have goals and uh, for every shoot that i do but now i am shooting with the 16 to 55 millimeter f 2.8 that's my go-to lens for video uh, i just love it paired with the nd filter from pro to pro um, it's it's a great filter. It's a great look. I love using it because you can get really wide shots and tight shots as well. So it's a perfect and versatile lens to use. I mainly use it too as well for weddings because it just makes it so much easier. When I am doing production, so I do switch over to my prime lenses in all manual mode because at that point I have more control of everything that's going on and I can redo shots if need be. But when it comes to running gun style and capturing things on the go, I love to use the 16 to 55 f 2.8. So that's my go-to lens. If you guys uh, have gotten comments before wondering what kind of lens that I use all the time, this is the lens that I use and I highly recommend it for video. If you watched my last video, you would know that my favorite lens is the 35 millimeter f 1.4, which in full frame, it's more equivalent to a 50 millimeter. However, I've been enjoying using the 56 millimeter f 1.2. That's equivalent to an 85 in full frame. 
I love using this lens, but it's not good for continuous movement shots um, just because it's not good autofocus. And I believe Fuji, hopefully Fuji, is going to be remaking these lenses uh, with the new upgraded um, software or whatever engineering that they're going to do to improve the autofocus in this lens because it's not great for continuous shooting, but for portraits and just standing still, absolutely, it's good to work with. But yeah, so now in action, this frame, I do have a fellow creative his name is Caio Aguilar so go ahead and follow him um, he's a great photographer he has a cool I don't want to say business nor do I want to say like it's more like a, a project that he's kind of working on it's called weekend only I'll go ahead and link his Instagram down below check out he's a Fuji user as well but he has a great great way of capturing things and documenting things and he's going to be starting a youtube channel here shortly so if you can show some support to his channel please do so because he was kind enough to come out and get some behind the scenes of this shoot so i appreciate you a lot kyle and thank you for coming but here again i'm just using more of the leaves to create the foreground and more depth so it can pop out um and I kind of got inspired here, as you can see her tattoo, she has a flower on there. So I wanted to use the leaves to kind of highlight that and kind of just make it all flow and come together. And this is where it's key. You know, if you see your subject that they have any tattoos or anything that can be used to highlight that person and kind of make an interesting look, use it. Here I was using my 12 millimeter F2 and I just found it like if it, it felt perfect to use it at that moment and spot. And that's when I decided to go ahead and use it. Because one of my goals again, was to use that 12 millimeter f2 to improve and see what kind of styles that i can capture what i did notice when i'm shooting with the 12 millimeter 12 millimeter that i'm always shooting down below and i feel that's more because i want to create that empowering look anytime i'm shooting a woman i just want to make them feel kind of big and, and using a wide angle lens um has that and also i don't mind the distortion that it would create for me, I like that and that's fine with me and it, it just adds another creative element to the photo. We were getting bitten up because it is hot. So I probably repeated this for like the third time already in this video, but man, Florida is hot. It's no joke. But here again, just playing around with my lenses, I kind of get a couple of shots and trying to find the, you know, the right foreground, the right depth, and just try to use my lenses accordingly. Um, I just love, love having more foreground into a photo. I think it just adds to it. Um, these photos, it just, you know, highly, ha Riley having a red head, red hair, she really pops and really stands out. So adding that green and with a red hair just really pops. And I've been also experimenting with black and whites, as you guys can see, and I really have been enjoying it more. I love using it just to add a character, but also to add more grain into the image when I'm editing it, just so I can just have that character and emphasize that and it feels more like a memory and a feel um, and that's why I've been experimenting and what, what I kind of learned actually it's more after this shoot was using the black and white using to highlight a memory and that kind of feel and draw those emotions that you may not be able to get when it comes to photo so that's a good learning lesson right there that I learned in post so that's my third lesson that I did learn from this shoot but again Always want to have movement in these photos, have her move side, left and right, whether it's going to be in a backlit situation or be in a complete shadow. It's just about moving and experimenting. Now here in this location is actually the location where me and Isabella did our photos in the rain, which unfortunately I wasn't able to get behind the scenes because of the rain. But now that I did get behind the scenes, um, we went ahead and changed the outfits. She went to an all white look. And here I wanted to make sure that Again, just a whole different feel to the texture. This is not as much as as of uh, greenery as we did have in the other location. This is more like a woody area. Um, a lot of old pines on the floor. You guys are gonna see here later in the photos. I can really highlight her in a different way. A different way. And as you can see, the environment really does play a big part. Whether it's nature and you go to another, you know, nature environment, when you change the scenery and it has a whole different landscape and feel it's going to change your image it's going to change your video and all and outfits do play a part as well so that's why we went ahead and switched all the way to the all white just to get a whole different look whole different feel and again i just went ahead and started with video because just to get it over with i love doing video but sometimes when i love doing video more when i have a 
an outline of what I want to create. And this here is more of capturing and then creating it in an edit or a post. So that's that. If you're noticing that the way that I like to capture and, and create things is more of spontaneous. I'm more of not a fully thinker, at least when it comes to these type of collabs. I have a common goal. I have the outlines that I want to you know, do and accomplish. Like I said, I want to use my 12 millimeter, um, use that. And for me, I like to just let the moment take over. Um, once you let the moment take over, you're just able to bounce ideas. Sometimes you can get lost, so you do have to be careful. When I work with clients, that's when I really sit down and take the time to do more of the pre-production side of things. But when I'm doing something like this, I wanna just enjoy it. I don't want it to feel like work. I want it to just go out and create and capture what comes to me, what feels to me. So it's important for you guys to have in to be able to distinguish those factors when you're going out and shooting. Now, here in this scenario, I have to actually go underexposed so I can conserve my highlights. Um, so you can guys get to choose when and when not to expose properly or overexpose. But anytime you want to get a great image with any camera, if you know how to expose and how to adjust, whether it's for video or for photo, you're going to get a great image. It's all about composition, exposing properly, and then being able to tell a story properly. And if you've seen the last, I think last video, I actually did make an edit of this whole little thing that I put together, which I was not really gonna use to make a separate video, but I went ahead and did because I found the right song that fit it. And then I created, but most of the time when it comes to collab, I do shoot to create later and post. I don't create it first in my head and then shoot. Now coming back to the aspect of our outfit, what I love about this outfit, one, it can flow, you can move it around, we can get different shots, different elements to it. And that's the reason why I love shooting women. Um, you can get a different look or exaggerated type of look, depending on the outfit that you can get. Um, and you're able to accentuate those lines of their body, what they may have or what they're wearing, or maybe the environment that's around them which I'm gonna make a video that I did in downtown Tampa where I did a shoot there and it was an urban feel. But for here in the nature shots, we're just trying to mess around the dress. We'll have her spin here later on, but we wanna get some exaggerated shots. So I got closer with a 12 millimeter F2 to be able to create that exaggeration shot. And then later on, I decided to add movement. So I told her to go ahead and take a step as you do it as well. And that's just gonna help make it more exaggerated. Um, of you know exaggerate the photo a little bit more add more movement make it look cool you know and just snap it and again i'm just shooting with a 12 millimeter f2 here it's all manual lens so just gotta make sure you focus properly now this other lens i switched to was the 56 millimeter f1.2 and here i'm just trying to get some portraits i told her hey play over here add some movement and then later on i told her hey put your head down pull it back up and see if i can capture any frames of her um, while doing that and just create an exaggerated type of look if you guys been actually enjoying the behind the scenes video, everything has been shot with the Sony ZV-1 and S-Log2. I really enjoy this camera for behind the scenes. It's small, the battery will last a very long time, surprisingly. And also the image quality is good for what it does and the autofocus, I can say that it's pretty superb. Um, we all know that Sony has been improving with their autofocus. I mean, it's pretty right there with Canon, believe it or not. Now, here are just some of the images that I didn't get to show some behind the scenes for, but here are all the images, again, with that 12 millimeter F2, and then the other one with the 50 millimeter, um, and just moving, and just trying to get and capture things that look different. You always wanna be able to highlight things and, and just create things in a, in a unique, creative way. But most of the times, anytime you're shooting, these are my tips. Go ahead, expose properly for the image. I always leave my ISO as low as possible. I always keep my aperture big as possible at f1.2 or f2 or f1.4. And at this point, I only adjust my shutter. When I only start adjusting the other things is when my shutter is already, say, too high or too low, then I need to adjust my ISO because I need to speed up my shutter speed because it's not too underexposed. So you gotta learn how to be able to adjust properly when exposing and know what to adjust so that you can capture what you want properly. But here again, they're just getting some of these shots of her hair that I told you prior, uh, what I wanted her to do. And hey guys, 
enjoy the photos. And if you went ahead and liked this video a lot, please subscribe, leave a comment down below on your thoughts. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.